morning my soccer universe well inspired by uh, a chat on my channel on a, a video I think the one where I talk about Barcelona's loss on Granada I think I want to talk a little bit about the crisis at Barcelona today uh, yesterday Barcelona won 2-1 at home to Villarreal so crisis a little bit abated although I really have to say I watched the first half first goal was a nice one by Griezmann Kikorna Messi uh, Griezmann the near near post had it in uh, was really interesting I, let's put it that way and then Arthur with a thunder shot in the 15th makes it 2-0 the shot took the slightest deflection I mean the keeper doesn't look all that great uh, but with that deflection I understand that he couldn't get to it so uh, that makes it 2-0 for Barcelona and then the game call completely fell asleep I mean both teams kinda had it uh, that it was not much happening to be honest there was really uh, they kept each other at bay it was boring as hell and I was falling asleep and Santi Casola uh, also pulls out a big shot and that one makes it 2-1 uh, I was thinking sure they watched the second half but from what I saw the Hades I didn't miss much so I decided to not watch the second half um, I will also have on well here you have the results from yesterday evening from all the leagues and so on so uh, I'm not gonna talk about everything. And Juventus got a come from behind win at Brescia with Palotelli making his debut. Um, first goal by uh, Brescia was a nice one. Uh, nil nil between Verona and Udine. Uh, let, let's go through more. I think Monaco beat Nice. That was a surprise, a 3 1. Uh, where Nice played in jerseys that very much looked like Sandoria shirts, at least as the and Nice is doing it. I mean, their home church just looks looks a million away jersey now, like uh, Sampdoria. Um, I'm gonna look. I'm really gonna gonna do a league uh, jersey review, and then we will look at that one too. Uh, what else was there? Yes, I mean the Austrian Cup. The, the, it's not was not really anything interesting. And we had the League Cup in England, where Spurs were eliminated on penalties by, against Colchester. Spurs, of course, playing a B squad. But uh, if you look at the penalty takers, those were all A team players, and Mura and Eriksen miss. So that's a little bit of a stunner. But Barcelona. We go back to Barcelona. I'm wearing Barcelona today get some flag at work why are wearing the little thing yeah because I'm doing a video on Barcelona for that I need to wear a Barcelona jersey and that's from the glory days when there was the champions uh, world champions um, first of all yes this is the worst start for Barcelona in ages however calling it a crisis to me is a little bit overdoing it I gotta be honest with that uh, for me it's not a true crisis uh, why 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 I do I think it's not a crisis because uh, still with this squad yes it is not they have set themselves such high standards that you know now Messi has not been playing uh, that's for me the first and for, 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 foremost and Messi has been patching over uh, many deficiencies that Barcelona has however you have Messi on the squad and once Messi will get fit although he had a slight hamstring injury again yesterday let's hope this doesn't get any more serious um, but if he gets fit he will pull Barcelona out of any hole and patch up over also uh, the away form is abysmal the home form though I don't think that much so far they've been winning every home game and most of the time more comfortable than not I mean it's the typical Barcelona home game is they jump out to an early lead then the opposition cuts it back a little bit in the end Barcelona pulls away gets a safe win yesterday not quite that much but you know more more, more or less what I saw then in the high highlights in the last 10 minutes there was no doubt that Barcelona is gonna win that one simply by the quality of the players I can expect Barcelona winning every home game uh, 
they will not win every home, home game, but I can expect it. But whatever they don't win, then at home, they will actually get from away. So I would say it is a very, very safe bet to me. The Barcelona makes at least 60 points. At least 60 points. And I think from what I remember, I should have checked that one, but I think 60 points in the last few years will always have gotten me in the Champions League. Uh, just by the quality of the squad. Uh, also, La Liga, to me, there was usually one super team, that's Barcelona, then another, uh, in the last year, it was Atletico Madrid, that made consistently points. The rest was erratic as can be. I was about to use a swear word, but refrain from it. Uh, take Sevilla. Sevilla can be world beaters on one day, and then the next day, they lose uh, against the bottom of the table team. Uh, Valencia had this up and down run last season where the first were abysmal and then they uh, had a, a run and actually finished within the Champions League spot. Um, Getafe was last year, most of the time they were rather con consistent, but consistently um, mediocre to good, let's say. They were consistently good, but not, uh, but not always winning the big ones, yeah, the same through La Liga, I mean Real Madrid, I think Real Madrid is, will be a better team this season, I think the signs are pointing up for, for them, uh, at least for now, although they are also, after the game in Paris, everyone crisis, 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 by the quality of the squad, those teams finish in the Champions League, now I understand, those two teams are not uh, there to finish in the top four, uh, they are there to win trophies, but I have to say, uh, the bare minimum, you want to play in the Champions League. So, you're never in danger of losing that, and for me at that point, then the crisis comes already a little bit. <laughs> Would I fire the coach? If there was some immediate coach available, yes. But I think the only big name available out there at the moment is Allegri, and Allegri is not a Barcelona coach. Um, I think that the next coach could be Eric Ten Hag from Amsterdam. Uh, not sure if the board will go for it though. Uh, or you promote someone from within the system. I just think that in order to have certain stability, stay, stay with the coach, see it out, fire him afterwards. I mean, you should have fired him. I honestly think he should have been fired last season. Uh, but I think the coach is probably the smallest problem of course, I actually think the fish starts stinking from the top. And that to me is management. And I have to say what I don't like with Barcelona is that in the past few years, uh, Barcelona has been losing their identity to the, to the part where I think the Mesquion club is just an empty phrase. Anymore. For me, they're becoming more an ordinary club, one super rich club that splurges almost like a Real Rundry with no rhyme or reason money. And then when they should get a player because they're a star player, and that's another issue they get to, demands we should get this one. They are kind of, yeah, we have spent so much money on players that didn't work out, we don't want to spend now the money on this player. And I do somehow understand it, but. I think the most sensible acquisition they had over the past years was first Rakitic and then De Jong. But whatever they play, uh, they made on offense, uh, I mean Suarez is still there, still a linchpin up there, at least that's how I see it. Dembele did not work out, Coutinho did not uh, work out, and he spent way too much money on those players. Uh, that money, they were not even worth the amount of money by far when you bought them and you overpaid for them and you overpaid for them big time. Uh, I would not have gone for that. That name or money that, that they got was thrown out, 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 out of the on those two players that never lived up to their expectations. Um, so for me, this is the, the bigger problem that uh, the squad structure is rather poor. And I have had, have had to say it for me, Barcelona was performing great based on two people, that is Messi, of course, but also Ter Stegen, although yesterday he made a, the rare goalkeeping mistake. But Ter Stegen, most of the time, has been outstanding and keeping them in games. Um, I also want to, for once, say that I also think that Piquet, despite me at the beginning of last season saying that he looks out of the form, I think Piquet 
also has been playing overall great, but I don't like I, I really don't, don't don't like the structure of the squad that much, especially on the offense. It's really more the Galactico um, thought. Yeah, here's a biggish name player we need to get him and plug him into a squad and hope he works with Messi, which, uh, let's face it, most people don't work well with Messi because they think of them as stars and Messi is the overarching superstar and you need someone who is willing to accept it and that's part of the Neymar problem, but seemingly Neymar is willing to accept this again. Uh, Griezmann probably uh, too, I mean, but Griezmann that was, I have to see, we have to see how it works out, but I think uh, Griezmann is somewhat of a sensible acquisition for the simple fact that I think he is a hard-working, creative player. And that is something that Barcelona needs more than anything else, um, to allow Messi the free space. Speaking of Messi, the boy is not getting younger. That's one thing. Uh, he has been keeping Barcelona afloat, but I sense a big amount of dissatisfaction on Messi's part as well. Uh, where he says, yeah, he doesn't want to leave Barcelona, but you know, when you, when you already put this, you're thinking, yeah, maybe there's some greener pastures, and I'm thinking the greener pastures that Messi might be looking at is Manchester City, uh, where not only we have Guardiola in there, but there's also Sergio Aguero and so on, you know, uh, and other players. I think that Messi could probably fit somewhat in this squad. Uh, and it might be also the complete train wreck, but you know, I kind of can't see that. So for me, one question that's coming for Barcelona is, it's definitely coming. Messi is a quiet guy, but I think he wields a huge, I personally think, he wields a huge influence within the club and within the dressing room. Um, and I'm not sure how healthy this is overall for the club now that there is a certain change, because he is almost one of the last ones from the glory years. Um, so, do you move on from Messi? Do you allow Messi to leave? Do, or even the bigger question is, is Bartomeo and the management at the moment looking to upset Messi so much that Messi will say, I'm gonna be out of here? I think those are questions that we have to ask uh, our, ourselves regarding Barcelona. And I don't know. I don't know. Uh, would be a daring move, but I think soon, soon or later Barcelona needs to face up to this question. Because uh, for me, Messi. Messi's call call is such, I mean, I don't think that many um, teams are so dependent on one single player, but for me, Messi almost is like a quarterback in the NFL, where when you see a star quarterback retiring, you want to have the succession lined up and it works in the rarest cases. Uh, but I think Barcelona definitely has to look at it. Is Ansu Fati the answer? We way too early to say that. Um, but I think. I really think that Barcelona has to probably swallow that pill sooner or later and a dissatisfied Messi will not produce for you. That's what I'm absolutely certain about. So we have to see how that question is uh, about to, to develop. I personally think that Messi probably has two, three great years still in him. But now with the injuries, <laughs> that's the other thing. Uh, and I think it was smart yesterday to uh, take Messi out of, out of play. Um, you have to be really careful. Don't let, don't, do not have him overplayed. It's better to have him with very little, with very little minutes um, for a year, and maybe you get more next year. Uh, I think you gotta think long, long term. I mean, think about uh, Federer and Nadal, all those big tennis players. They prolong their career by actually choosing wisely when to rest and when not. And maybe you are at that stage with Messi as well. That harness him a little bit, um, protect him, uh, and maybe he will be then in super form come the, the release really Champions League semi-final, quarter the quarter-final. This is where you need him. I think you should make it easily to that stage, even with that squad, easily, but you know, 
I know that uh, ev everyone's panicked by the perform performance in Dortmund. Let's wait and see. Next up is Inter. Inter is also not all that great. I mean, Inter could do something, but I honestly think that um, Barcelona will go over Inter easily as well. So for me, yes, it is an iffy period at the moment, and I think uh, Barcelona set themselves such an incredibly high standard that for once not moving with the uh, not uh, making win after win after win uh, manifests itself in what people call a crisis i think that's a little bit too harsh especially since you were on the weekend just four points off the pace i mean four points is nothing if you look at 538 barcelona are still strong favorites to win the league uh, if I look at the betting markets, there's still strong favorites to win the league. Uh, we don't see it any other way. Um, just wait, wait a little bit. Be a little, little, a little bit patient. I'm, I'm never a fan of firing coaches mid-season because it typically does not help. It typically does not help. I think the rare exception is Zidane or maybe a Roberto Di Matteo, where suddenly it turned, turned around, but. Uh, um, the long run, no. It typically, does not not work. It just gives more trouble than the squad needs to. You know, you need the preparation time over the summer. I mean, maybe in the winter break you could think about that, but I also think there the time Spain is playing through this break as well. So more or less. So it also does not really work. So I think you're stuck with Valverde. And you don't want to pay the extra wages as well. So I would give Valverde one last season. Uh, but I would actually make it. If you do not win the Champions League, there is no further contract. If you get away from the Barcelona identity even more, there is no further contract. I, I would really say this is your last season. And then we move on. And then we make a clean cut. Uh, whether you include Messi still or not, that I think is a call that management will have to make. I actually have a feeling they are already moving a little bit into, yeah, you know, Messi, you're a little bit too powerful here. <laughs> but uh, I actually think that management needs to change for Barcelona. Uh, less global branding, more soccer people in there that give the identity back. I think Barcelona is moving away. You don't need to go all Guardiola again because we that the system has run its way a little bit, although Guardiola is improving himself. Uh, but yeah. And the last last thing for a replacement coach, I said only Allegri. I mean, Luis Enrique would be there, but a Luis Enrique um, at the end did also not work that well in Barcelona. And I also have to say that uh, due to his family tragedy, I don't think that Luis Enrique is yet ready to come back. Uh, that clearly said, I think I will stay away still from Luis, Luis Enrique. Uh, he needs to take care of that issue first, so I don't think he's a viable option. Those are my thoughts on Barcelona. I have to say, I don't think it's a crisis yet. Crisis is too strong of a word. It's a rough patch. It's definitely a rough patch to start the season. But if you start the season without Messi, hmm, wait, what, 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 what do you want to do? And it will happen again. It will happen. Barcelona will go on a streak. I think in a month or so, Barcelona might be in the top two with just one or two points off the pace. Um, I would be worried if they suddenly lose the classical 5 0 or something like that. Then I think we can talk crisis. At the moment, I think it's just too much sensationalism, uh, at least on the press part, and too little uh, actual thought um, for long term. And if you want to be successful, you need to be long term. And there, I, I'm blaming a little bit Barra Bar Barcelona, because after the name, I think the selling of Neymar, or the Neymar case, is that's Barcelona Spain at the moment. I really have to say that Barcelona uh, Dealing with Neymar, first getting with Neymar got you something, but then Neymar leaving sent you in a sort of a tail tailspin that you have not recovered yet, and now Neymar is looming again. And how do you resolve that issue? I think these are the big, uh, this, this is another big question. Do you really go for Neymar? 
I mean, that player might only really work in Barcelona with Messi. If you don't get Neymar, then I think you're showing Messi the door. So, you know, that, that's how I see it. I personally would like to see Barcelona going back to the identity of Messi on club and not becoming your ordinary big spender like Real Madrid, losing playing identity with hiring a coach that is more defensively minded. Um, so that's uh, where I am at. One last thought though, and that's all I said this um, after the semi-final loss to Liverpool. I think it's not bad that Barcelona has to play catch-up in a way. I think Barcelona suffered in the last two years that uh, they, the league was not competitive for them. And by December, January, they had basically all but wrapped up the league. Um, and I think that hurt them in the latter stage, stages of the Champions League. See, last year Liverpool got hot. Uh, Real Madrid also got hot late. Um, that's what you need. And maybe, maybe this might just be the way forward for Barcelona to actually winning the big years. A little bit hope on the horizon. As I said, calm down, calm down. Let's wait for another month, maybe even two. But I don't think the signs are point at all that bad. Let me know what you think about Barcelona. Uh, drop a comment below. Give me a thumbs up if you liked this video. Also, I hope you liked the all the results popping on the, on the side. And yeah, I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.